Good morning, everyone. We are so glad to have the opportunity and the privilege to worship God together here at North Mount Church. And we are grateful that so many of you took the time this morning on this special Father's Day to come here for us to worship our God together. That does not go unnoticed to us. And if you're a visitor, we are especially glad that you took the time out of the many churches and the many options that you have had to take the time to come here to worship our God together. So we thank you and we give you the honor that's due unto you for coming here with us today. Also, we'd like to extend a hearty and a happy Father's Day to all the wonderful men in our midst today who have had the honor and the privilege of being able to raise up children in the spirit of God and in other ways that we can say that we are grateful for the men in our lives. And if you're a dad here today, we'd just like to give a round of applause to all the fathers. Later on in our service, we will be giving each man in the service a special token of our appreciation for the job that you have been given for raising the children within your care. And we also like to give attention to the single mothers in our midst. If you know anyone who has had the honor of raising their children and going through the difficulty of raising the children without the help of a dad, we want to to remind you to give those women a call today and tell them, you know what, happy Father's Day, and we acknowledge the work that you have done in raising your children alone. With that being said, I would like to draw your attention to some of the notices in the bulletin, the announcements. Alice Brewer passed away this week, and we are so sorry that has happened, and the family at NBC, our church, would like to say thanks to Ken Muras for who watched over Alice over these last several years after her son Dale passed away. So remember Alice and her family as they go through this difficult time. It would be great if you could give her a call or go and not give her a call, but give her family a call and the people who were in her midst during these last days of her life. We also ask that you will pray for Mabel. Um, the prayer request is listed in the bulletin. She has been looking for work over the last couple of months, and it would be great if you guys could take the time out to pray for her so that she'll be able to find success in that. The pool will be opening on, the Highwood Outdoor Pool will be opening on June 18th. If you enjoy swimming or know someone who does, Michael Lum, or one of the pastoral interns here, is organizing a group to go swim at the pool. For more information, you can call Michael at the number that is listed. And the drop-in cafe will be ended throughout the summer months and we'll keep you posted on whether or not we'll, during the fall when the, these events will be starting up again. And the ladies group here at North Mount, every Wednesday we have a group of elderly men who meet together for fellowship from 10 to 11 and we have some ladies that get together as well for knitting. And they were able to send off $216.05 to share in way through donations that were made every Wednesday. Also, every Sunday morning at 9 a.m. downstairs, we have the opportunity to go before God's presence in prayer. Michael is normally the one that's there and Pastor Greg, so each Sunday we just take the time before the service starts to go before God, asking him for his presence to be in our midst as we seek to worship him because we recognize that without his presence, everything that we do is futile. And so we take the time to go before God and seek in his face for his guidance in the service. And also the elders of the Bonavista Baptist Church um, and the members invite you to share with them as they welcome Reverend Scott Simpson as their senior pastor to the church. The celebration will be held on June 25th of 2017 at 10 a.m. in their worship service, which is located at 1507 Acadia Drive, Southeast Calgary. So they're just asking us to be celebrating with them as they welcome their new pastor. And just as a note of reminder, Pastor Greg is still in Lebanon this week, and it would be great if you could continue to pray for him and his family as he's over there doing the Lord's work. Also, this summer, as we have mentioned before, we have a couple of events that are coming up. On June 30th, we'll be having our first games night, and we'd love for each, each and every one of you could tell your friends and your loved ones, if there's anyone that is young in your life and they want to come out and play some games on a Friday night, we'd love to have the opportunity to see you guys come out and to share with us and to have the opportunity to come closer together through the form of social fellowship in the form of games. We will also be having a stampede breakfast on July 8th. 
And we would love if you guys could tell all your friends, everyone in the community that you come across about this Stampede Breakfast because we want it to be a, a, an event where the community feels God's love through us and feel that they can join us here at North Mount. We'll also be having two barbecues this summer. One will be on July 15th and the other August 26th. And it would be great if each and every one of you could be there and you could tell your friends and families about it. And we're looking for volunteers just to remind you that if you feel led to help us in any way, we'll greatly appreciate it. You could talk to myself, Pastor Gabriel, Pastor Greg when he comes back, Bill and Michael, the other two pastoral interns here at the church. And with that being said, I would like for us to begin our service with a brief prayer as we ask God to be in our midst. Heavenly Father, we are grateful to have the opportunity to worship you, and we recognize, dear God, even in the midst of worshiping you, we need your Holy Spirit to do it effectively. And so, dear God, I pray that your anointing and your grace and your spirit will fall upon the worship leader and us as your congregants as we seek to give unto you what is due unto your name. I ask, O oh God, that whatever may be within us that will cause us to be distracted from our worship will be taken away, but your spirit, dear God, will reign among us, and that your anointing will reign among us, and that everything that is about you will come to the forefront of our minds as we meet together as one body here at North Mount Church, seeking to do nothing other than to praise your holy name. Because we recognize that no one in this world deserves to be glorified and to be worshipped other than you. And so, dear God, at this time, we carve out just this period of time together to come as a community, as one fellowship here at North Mount Baptist Church to do just that. So we ask, oh God, that your spirit will fall upon um, the worship leader, Pastor Gabriel as he ministers the word, and the different individuals who will be doing special songs and contributing to this service. We give you the honor, the praise, and the glory for all that you are doing here with us. In Jesus' holy and precious name, amen. Brother Ray Wensley will be leading us in worship this morning. Good morning. Uh, we'll start off with a hymn, uh, number 18. Let's just praise the Lord. Why don't you stand with me? Stretch those arms and legs and the lungs. Let's praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let's just technical difficulties <laughs> as you may have noticed so let's switch to the uh, book uh, our hymn book and go to 645 Lord's Prayer. When you pray, you shall not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the corners of the streets, that they may be seen by men. Assuredly, I say to you, they have their reward. Together? But when you pray, go into your room, and when you have shut your door, pray to your Father who is in the secret place, and your Father, who sees in secret, will reward you openly. When you pray, do not use vain repetitions as the heathen do, for they think that they will be heard for their many words. Together, therefore, 
do not be like them, for your Father knows the things you have need of before you ask him. In this manner, therefore pray. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. So, are we... We're good. Okay. Technical difficulty solved. Uh, we'll sing number 404, Faith of Our Fathers. coordination that's uh, you may want to use the hymn books verse 2 404 Ushers would come forward for the offering now.
Please be seated. Mabel is going to come and share a gift of song with us.
Thank you, Mabel. Thank you, Brian. Who gave us alms? Where there's courage, where the fathers open trust in God. Shall we pray? Immortal King of Kings, our Heavenly Father. We bless and adore you this morning and we give you praises for you are the God of our lives. We thank you as a community, as your family. We thank you this morning. We give you praise for the gifts and talents within this church. We give you praise for the resources within this church. We give you honor, O oh Lord, for labors you've brought to the harvest. And Father, we thank you for all the fathers here this morning. We thank you for the grace you've shown. We thank you, Father, for the mercy you've had upon each and every one of us. We thank you for the single mothers. We thank you for the fathers who've gone to be with you in glory. And we thank you, Father, for this nation. We thank you for the city of Calgary. We thank you, Father, O oh Lord, for the great things you're doing in this community. And Father, we bless you for all that you do. And you do wondrously well. Father, we lift up to you this morning. All those who were shot in, we lift up to you this morning all those who are in need of our prayers. Father, those who were sick, Father, we pray for them. We call upon your name. You know their infirmities, and oh Lord, we pray you will heal them. Emmanuel, you God who is always with us, our Father who understands our pain and our requests even before we ask them. We pray today, O oh Lord, that you will bless each and every one of us here today. And Lord, we lift up to you all those who are in need in one way or the other, those who are struggling with their finances, those who are looking for jobs, Lord, those who are looking for a spouse, Lord, those who are looking for the fruit of the womb. And Lord, we pray in your mercy and your grace that you will answer our prayers. And Lord, we pray because you are our Father. We pray to you this morning that you will answer those innermost requests we cannot even share with anyone. Father, please step into our situations Step into our lives, and Lord, we pray that you will effect new things in our lives. Lord Jesus, we pray this morning, and we lift up Pastor Greg into your hands, O oh Lord. We pray you will continue to be with him and all those that went on the trip to Lebanon. O oh Lord, we pray you will open their eyes to see new areas that can be explored in your kingdom, O oh Lord. We pray for new opportunities that they will see. Father, we pray that you will protect them from all evil. And Lord, today, we we'll lift up those who are sick once more into your hands. Father, pray, heal them, O oh Lord. Let your name be praised. Lord, as we are gathered this morning, O oh Lord, to worship you and to be with you. Father, open the eyes of our heart, O oh Lord, that we may see you, O oh Lord that we may hear what you're saying to us. And Lord, as you taught your disciples to say, one more time today we say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, 
the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. If you know the song and you feel compelled to confess something that we take for granted, please do. If you don't know anything about this worship song and you still want to confess some of the things that we take for granted, um, you're more than welcome to. We'll be reading from Matthew chapter 6, verse 1 to 14. Be careful not to do your acts of righteousness before men, to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets, as hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets, 
to be honored by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your giving may be in secret. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites, for they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by men. I tell you the truth, they have received their reward in full. But when you pray, go into your room, close the door and pray to your father who is unseen. Then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for they think they will be heard because of their many words. Do not be like them, for your Father knows what you need before you ask him. This, then, is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive, forgive us our debts as we, for, as we also have forgiven our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. For if you forgive men when they sin against you, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. Good morning. Thank you, Mr. Lola. Thank you, everyone, for being here this morning. I'm struggling this morning because I remember someone, a wonderful person, my mentor, my superhero. Every morning when I leave the house, the best part of my day before we started dropping my kids off a day, um, day home is when my sons run up to me and they hold on to me. They want to go with me to work or they just want me to stay at home. That usually is the best time of the day for me. I feel like the best dad in the world. I feel like a hero. It is interesting that growing up, I didn't realize my affection towards my father was due to this reasons, because I hold him up high as this superhero. My father has passed away. He's gone to be with the Lord. But the relationship I had with my father is a relationship my sister still envy till tomorrow. They're like, you're closer to him than we were. But the interesting thing is, the same sisters will, tell, will still tell you, he told me certain things he never told you guys. That was my father. The level of intimacy we have with our parents, we have with the fathers especially, sometimes determine our outlook on life. I was talking to Prince during the week. I said, do you have a mentor? And he said, yes. Who is your mentor? He said, my father. When we look at our fathers, we see the image of this 
Superhero. I had an image up there. I don't know if we have it. Okay, I think we have it. I don't know if you can see it very well. We're just going to walk. Bye, kiddo. I'm off to walk, the father says. And the boy says, bye, dad. And he's looking at the father as a superhero. Of course, it's Superman. It could be anyone. It could be Spider-Man. It could be Batman. It could be anything. Just a superhero. Why do kids look at their fathers with such awe? Why do we refer to our fathers in this manner? Hey, Dad. In these days, what you hear from fathers is, hey, buddy. There's a level of intimacy. There's a level of friendship between the father and the child that actually speaks into the life of that child, that actually dictates how the child views the world. Imagine a father who understands, who actually beats the child every single day and calls him an idiot. Says the son is stupid. Calls a child a dunce and beats the mother. When that child grows up, what do you think the child will start to think about women and the children? That child learns from his surroundings or her surroundings, and the son starts to think this is how you treat people. There's a video on Facebook I watched recently. This is about a mother, but it also applies to parenting. This woman hired some housemaid. She came from another country, and she sees this lady's passport. Unbeknownst to her, this lady had um, as a son as well. And basically what happened was a series of abuse. She will smack the lady, she will starve her, and she will ask her to sleep in the closet. And if there's anything that goes wrong, the woman calls this lady stupid, idiot. And then this lady actually has a little daughter who is, I think, three or four years old. They called from the school one day. And they said, you need to come in. Why? When the lady got there, they told her, we're not sure what's happening in your home. But your daughter, who until now has been a very good girl, it's changed. The other day, the teacher fell and, and uh, the apple fell from her hand. And your daughter said, hey, stupid, pick it up. I'm actually I'm not sure how the story fully ends. But what is my point? My point is this. Parents reflect. We, the children reflect what they see in their parents. In the scripture read to us by Sister Lola, who I'm very sure was probably really <laughs> nervous reading, she was very quiet. That scripture talked about something, something wonderful. All through the verses from verse 1 to 14, we kept hearing the word Father, Father, Father. If you have your Bibles in front of you, I want you to open to Matthew chapter 6, verse 1 to 14. It would also be on, um, on the screen there. Matthew chapter 6, 1 to 14. I'm sure we're all familiar with the words of this particular, excuse me here, this particular passage. It's a beautiful passage. 
it's a passage, when we think of it, we think, oh yeah, the Lord's Prayer. But what Jesus was trying to channel was this. This is how to be intimate with God. Here, God is a model for us. Not only as fathers, but as mothers, as parents, as family members. God is a model of how to be in a relationship. Some of us here today are married. Some of us are teenagers hoping one day to get that right person. Some of us were lost a partners years ago. Some of us recently. But we all have relationships with different people. When you read this particular chapter, Jesus was talking to his disciples. He was telling them how to be. If you read from chapter 5 of Matthew, what it means to be at the time they were not called Christians. He was just telling everybody how to be in society, how to be in the community you live in, how to live your life. That was what Jesus was doing. It was telling them the Beatitudes in Matthew chapter 5. Blessed are the poor in spirit for this. And it was telling them different things on how to live life. And then when did we get to chapter 6 of Matthew? It went on to say, be careful not to practice your righteousness in front of others to be seen by them. If you do, you will have no reward from your Father in heaven. That's the first one. So when you give to the needy, do not announce it with trumpets as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and on the streets to be honored by others. Truly I tell you, they have received their reward in full. Verse 3, but when you give to the needy, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing. Verse 4, so that your giving may be in secret, then your father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. Two things, your righteousness and your giving. There's something beautiful about the righteousness of God that is imparted to us as Christians. The righteousness of God that is imparted to us did not come because we are perfect people. The book of Romans chapter 5 verse 8 says something. But God commends his love, showed his love to us. That while we were sinners, Christ died for us. And when you read John chapter 1 verse 12... The Bible says, for as many as believe him, to them gave him power to be the children of God. We became children of God. We became righteous, not by our own works. No one knew when it happened. We read about it. But today we can claim that righteousness. When God, when we ask God for something, oh Lord, we need this. God does not show us, show everybody, oh, hey, everybody, listen, I'm giving Gabriel $10,000. Oh Lord, I really love that. But <laughs> I'm giving Gabriel $10,000. Come and see, I want to show you. Something beautiful happens. I pray to God, nobody knows it happens. This is a model for us. I'm still getting to the model that Jesus Christ said in his prayers. The prayer to God. It's how to be in a relationship with God. But before that, it said, when you give to the needy, don't be like the hypocrites. They stand on the street corners and say, hey, everybody, I'm giving this amount to this person. Because I'm such a wonderful person. Thank you. 
When you give, do it in secret. Do it like God would do. Just make sure your Father in heaven is the one that will be rewarding you. Verse 5, and when you pray, do not be like the hypocrites. For they love to pray standing in the synagogues and on the street corners to be seen by others. Truly, I tell you, they have received the reward in full. A man standing there saying, Oh God, I thank you for the city of Calgary. And I pray, Lord, that all the sinners in the city will be saved. He's standing in the corner right downtown by the public library there, praying for everyone to see. He is praying for all sinners. It's a great thing. It's a great gesture. But when Jesus was praying, the Bible said he will go off into a corner to pray. Who was he praying for? The Bible never said when Jesus was with all the multitudes that he was praying over them and saying this and that. Jesus was praying in the corner. God, Jesus, our model of intimacy. These are some of the things that we're saying before we got to the model for prayer which is basically a roadmap for relationships. Let's look at it together. Verse 6 says, But when you pray, go into your room, close the door, and pray to your Father who is unseen. Then your Father who sees what is done in secret will reward you. And when you pray, do not keep on babbling like pagans, for the thing that will be heard because of their many words. <sighs> I got to say this. I sometimes do that, actually. Oh, Lord, I thank you. I bless your name. I give you glory. And, Lord, I pray. And I keep repeating myself. And then my wife taps me. You're repeating yourself. I forget. The Jesus that say, it's not necessary. God already knows. I look at my sons and I know, uh oh, he's hungry or he's tired. I can tell. I'm not God, but I can tell he's my son. God already knows. But sometimes I need him to ask, Dad, can I have this? Can I have some, as James will say, go gut? That's your gut. Go gut. Do not be like them, for your father knows what you need before you ask him. This then is how you should pray. Our Father in heaven, our Lord, be your name. When I think of God, I think of him as a father, a mother, a friend. It was a patriarchal society for sure, but we still say those words today, our father. There was something beautiful about what Prince said earlier on today. If you know of someone, a single mother, give them a call. Wish them happy Father's Day. They're doing double duty. These are people, I think they're one, some of the world's best superheroes. Raising their children alone. After time, I want to run away. I love my kids, don't get me wrong. But after time, I want to run away. Why? Because... <laughs> I feel the pressure to do this, to do that. After a few hours, I'm tired. 
and my wife goes all day doing the same thing I've been doing and never complains. Sometimes she reminds me to do the chores. But our Father in heaven, our Lord be your name. Dear Father, I with you. You are the best. In every relationship, if we do not compliment each other, what happens? We start to forget that we actually like each other. When we approach God, we approach God with this sense, yes, he's the almighty God. When all of him, we honor your name, oh God. We're reminding God that, Lord God, I love you. We're showing our appreciation for all God has done in our lives and is still doing in our lives. Jesus was not just talking about, just go and do this. This is how you should pray all the time. No, he was just giving us a model of how to pray, but also a model of walking with God. After all, when we go back to the book of Genesis, all God wanted to do when he created us was to do what? Be with us, be in a relationship with us. That's one of the most beautiful things about God. If I was the CEO of a company, I wouldn't want anything to do with my employees. I just want to enjoy the money I make off their backs. But that's not God. God created us to be in relationship. The Bible said every evening God will come and meet Adam and Eve and they will have a good time. God still wants to be in that relationship. And that's why Jesus said, this is how you should pray. This is how you should be in relationship with God. First compliment him, remind him. Already he knows, yes, but just say it again. God, I honor your name. We're running behind. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. I want your will to be done in my life. That's what we tell God. I want your will to be done in my life. Whenever you say, dear, for those of us who are married, Ray, if Shirley Ann says, oh, this is what we're doing. What do you say? Yes, dear. Yes, dear. Let your will be done. Yes, dear, that's it. When I was told a few months before I got married that Gabriel, the secret phrase to every good marriage is yes, dear. I thought they were joking. Now I'm four, almost four years into it, now I know. The secret is what? Yes, dear. Let your will be done in heaven as it is in, on earth as it is in heaven. I'm gonna stack skipping. Give us today, Lord, I really need need some things from you, our daily bread. And Lord, I want you to forgive me, my saints. In every relationship, if we do not forgive each other, if we can't find it in ourselves to forgive each other, we'll both be miserable. We tell God, I know you've already forgiven me. Help me to be able to forgive others. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. Every father here today, when our sons or our children sin against us or they make us angry, we get a little bit angry, but we still forgive them. And they also come to us, guide us. We talked about mentorship. Our fathers as our mentors. God, Jesus modeling the kind of relationship we should have with God and with each other in this particular passage. I'm sure you've said that prayer several times over the course of your lives. 
But how many of times have you really thought about it as a model for relationship? How to be? I love you, dear. Yes, dear. Please forgive me. So what are we doing tomorrow? Especially when we're in, on a road trip. Better ask your wife the, for the direction. For most of the time, they know the direction more than the men. But we have one person, one being, who knows everything about us, everything that we need. He's still interested in a relationship with us, and that is our Father who is in heaven. God is interested in that relationship. He wants you to acknowledge him. He wants you to say, Lord, I love you. He wants to, you to come to him, God, I need this. I need this job. He wants you to come to him and tell him, God, I'm sorry for doing this. Let's close our eyes. Think about those in your lives. Close your eyes and just think about those in your lives, those who need. Those who need you to forgive them. Please close your eyes. and We're actually praying right now. I want you to close your eyes and just think within yourself. How is my relationship with God? How is my walk with God, the God of all the earth, my Father who is in heaven? Think and pray today and just tell him, God, I love you. God, let your will be done. God, please forgive me. And God, give me my daily bread. Pray to him and tell him you're sorry. Tell him how much you love him. And tell him, Father in heaven, Father in heaven, I love and I adore you. Dear Father, we bless you for you are here already. We give you praise for you are the God Almighty, our Father who is in heaven. And we pray, Lord, today that you will bring us nearer to you. You help us, O oh Lord, acknowledge you each day. And you will forgive us, O oh Lord. Help us, O oh Lord to appreciate and walk with you more and to ask of you whatever we need. Let your name be praised for we pray with thanksgiving in Jesus' name. Amen. I want us to, as Esther and Aram will be singing the song, I want you to meditate on the words of the songs. That's a beautiful song. If you know the song, please sing along with them.
just what we need before we say our word. You're a good, good father. It's who you are. It's who you are. It's who you are. And I'm loved by you. It's who I am. It's who I am. It's who I am. Amen. We'll skip the last hymn. And I just want to pray with you. If you could stand, please. Just a quick announcement. For all the fathers, there will be cookies distributed at the end of the service for you. And if you know of a father, uh, a single mom, Please feel free to get a cookie for them just to tell them how much we appreciate them and to say happy Father's Day. Shall we pray? Dear Father in heaven, you are perfect in all of your ways. You know us more than we know of ourselves. And as you go, people go out this day to celebrate Father's Day, we pray, Lord, let them go forth in your love. Let them go forth appreciating the beauty of your words. Let them go forth spreading your love and love. Lord, we love you. We love you. And Lord, we love you. Go forth in the grace, mercy, and peace of the Lord Almighty. Have a wonderful week.